In the previous video, we determined that this expression here was enough to evaluate the integral of f of x from a to b, but we shouldn't forget that we only proved that this equal sign here would be true for polynomials up to degree 3. So we need to think of a different label for this expression. And if we go back to the terminology from the last couple of videos, we could name this g, just this time not g alone or from negative 1 to 1, but this time we would call it g from a to b of f. So let's use this formula here to do an example, to play the game that we talked about playing in the first video. So it's your turn to think of some crazy interval and some crazy function f up to polynomial degree 3 that you don't think I can compute by knowing these two values. So let's say you say I want a to be a negative number maybe negative square root of 3 plus 1 over 2 and you say you want b to be the square root of 3 plus 1 over 2. So you also start thinking of your function f of x is equal to something 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 but you don't tell me of course what that is. But that doesn't matter I can already get to work because I see that this b minus a here and this a minus b and this b plus a I can all I can start subbing in for all of those so first of all I need to know what b minus a is that happens quite a bit b minus a would be equal to the square root of 3 plus 1 divided by 2 minus the negative square root of 3 plus 1 over 2, so I'm going to distribute this minus sign here. Plus, uh, yeah, let's just put this all under the same thing. So that would be plus the square root of 3 and then a minus a 1. And we see that the 1's are going to fall away. And we get here 2 square roots of 3 over 2. Oh, well, that's nice. That cancels. So, square root of 3. So, what is a plus b? I'm also going to need to know that, or b plus a. b plus a is just, I think I'll just copy that here, the same thing, oops, the same thing, just with a plus sign. This time, I see these square roots of 3 are going to cancel and I end up with one half plus one half well that's nice that's just one okay so now I'm ready to sub into this equation I think I'll just make a copy of that so we have our equation here and we have our values that we need so let's maybe just write them in here. So b minus a, we already determined to be this value here. So it was just uh, right. b minus a was the square root of 3. So we'll put a square root of 3 here. It's a square root of 3. And a minus b, of course, is just going to be the negative square root of 3. So the negative square root of 3. And b plus a, what was that? b plus a, we said, was 1. So we can write in a 1 here. These two situations. So we have a 1 here and a 1 here. And now if I c 
cancel here, then that means in the end I have a negative one half plus a one half. Well, that's nice. That just simplifies to f of zero, right? And if these cancel, then I also have a one half plus a one half, so that's f of one. Well, that works out very nicely. So I have the square root of 3 over 2 times f of 0 plus f of 1. And now I have to ask, what is f of 0 and f of 1? I need to know those two things. So you have given this into a computer, and you know that we have these two values, f of 1. So you're still not showing me your actual function. Let me copy that here. But you can tell me that much. So f of 1 is 23.36 and f of 0 is negative 1.5. So let's continue to calculate here. So square root of 3 over 2 times 27.36 plus, or I'll just say minus, 1.5. So we could divide both of those by 2, and we get the square root of 3, although we could just write, let's say, 1.732. 1.732, which is a good approximation for the square root of 3, times, now, half of this must be well let's get this right 27.36 divided by 2 is just 13.68 13.68 minus now half of 1.5 would be 0 0.75 and that would simplify to 1.732 times, now if we just subtract that, it, that must be 12.93, right? So let's multiply that out. I'll take my trusty calculator here. 12.93 times one point. 732 is going to be equal to 22.395. 22.395. So, that's my answer. Who knows if I'm right or not, but that is my answer. I think the integral of your function is 22.395. So, even you are not sure if I'm right or not, so you go to your computer program again and you type your polynomial into it. We see that that's what it is. 23x to the third plus 3.14x squared plus 2.72x minus 3 halves. My goodness, that's crazy. You really wanted me to be confused by your craziness. Well, Let's see what your computer program says is the actual integral. So the integral of this function from a to b is 22.39, etc., etc. If we take the first three digits like I had before, 22.395. Let's let's see what we had before. We had. 22.395. So you see that whatever you do, whatever function you think of up to degree 3, I will be able to estimate it exactly. So I only use the word estimate because I can also use this function that we've dreamed up for other functions as well, but for up to degree 3, it works exactly. And all I need to know, 
are two points on the curve. And as we see here, it worked like a charm. What was it that worked? It was the Gauss Legendre Quadrature. Quadrature. The Gauss Legendre Quadrature.